While Miss Virginia Dell was away on her summer vacation, her house got robbed. Three people were caught on the security camera and they became the main suspects. Ayla, Virginia's best friend, said, Uh, I've been coming to pick up mail. Sophia, the housemaid, said, I've come every Wednesday to clean the house. And Danica, the gardener, said, I come every Friday to take care of the garden. Who robbed Miss Dell? It must have been Sophia, the housemaid. She said that she cleaned the house every week. But look at the house. It's very dusty. She's shady, and she must be the main suspect. Last Friday, Mary sneaked out to a party without asking her mom's permission. Her mom found out about it and grounded Mary for a month. No friends, no parties. Two weeks after that, there was another party, and Mary couldn't miss it. The morning after the second party, Miss Roberts walked into Mary's room and asked her what she'd been doing in the evening. I was solving my new puzzle, the girl answered. Mary got grounded for another month. Why? Take a look at the puzzle. She's barely started it. It doesn't look like an evening-long activity. Jane was a straight-A college student, but her friends hadn't heard from her in a week. When she didn't show up for an exam, her best friend got concerned. She came hmm. to visit, but Jane wasn't home. So, she reported that Jane had been kidnapped. There were three suspects, all of them Jane's ex-boyfriends. Michael, Miguel, and Daniel. All of them denied being in any contact with the girl. Who should be arrested? The note on the fridge is a clue. It looks like a recipe, but it's not. It's the number of letters you should take from each word. Two-fourths of milk gives us M-I. Then we have C-H, then A, E, and L. It seems that Michael has something to do with Jane's disappearance. I'll be showing you combinations of emojis, and your task is to guess what fruit or vegetable they stand for. Here's the first, very simple one. What do you think it is? So there's an egg and a plant. So, of course, it's an eggplant. The next one. This time, it's not so obvious. Do you have any ideas? It's a ladyfinger. Good job. Off to the next one. I wonder if you can get this one right. A car and a rat. A carrot, of course. Now let's add some letters to help you. What about this one? What's your bet? O and a leaf. That's an olive, of course. Okay, here's the next one, and I know you'll get it right. Some sugar, or rather something sweet, and a potato. Of course, it's a sweet potato. Okay, now it's getting a bit more complicated. What's your call? There are two types of people who love it and those who can't stand it. It's cauliflower. Okay, and here's the last one for you. Q, a comb, and a bear. Cucumber. Great job with these ones. Esme was having a walk in the forest and got lost. She was wandering around until she found the road leading to the house of a witch, her old friend. Esme approached the house, but the witch wasn't there. Instead, there were four open portals. On the table, Esme found the witch's to-do list. Can you figure out which portal the witch entered?
The first two tasks on the witch's to-do list are completed, so she's most likely left to catch some frogs. The number in brackets must mean the number of sides each portal has. 10 is a star, 3 is a triangle, 4 is a square, and a 0 is a circle. To catch some frogs, she must have used the portal that looks like a square. Cindy was a kind and beautiful girl in her junior year. Two best friends, Dylan and Kobe, wanted to ask her out to prom. So the guys decided to ask Cindy's best friend which of them likes Cindy more. The girl didn't want to share her best friend's secrets, but she gave them a hint. Cindy loves pizza, but she can't stand burgers. She likes to go to the pool, but never goes to the gym. Her favorite animal is the llama, but she's afraid of zebras. Which of the boys does Cindy like? Cindy's friend wanted to give the guy a clue, so we have to look for some pattern. All the things Cindy likes have double letters in them. Dylan has the double L in his name, so he must be the one Cindy likes more. Kate woke up in a dungeon and couldn't remember what had happened to her. The place didn't look safe, so she decided to get out. The door was open and she left the room, walking down the hallway. Several minutes later, Kate stopped in front of two elevators and one door with an exit sign on it. Is it the way out? In any case, the door was locked and required a password. Can you guess what the password is? Pay attention to the numbers on the elevators. They say 13 and 11, so the password must be 1311. In a small quiet town, young men started to go missing. The police had been looking for them for many months and couldn't find any traces. But one day, they discovered an abandoned basement in an old swimming pool. Inside, there were three young men who claimed they had been held there for three months. One of them was the kidnapper. But who? Look. One guy doesn't have facial hair whatsoever, and another man has grown a beard since he hasn't shaved in three months. But this guy is freshly shaved, so he must be the kidnapper. Oliver is terrible at packing. Whenever he goes somewhere, he always takes stuff he'll never need, so he needs your help with some packing. Today, he's packing to go camping in the forest. Take a look at his bag and decide what he won't need on the trip. Look, there's an electric hairdryer. There's no electricity in the forest, so he can definitely leave it at home. Now look at what Oliver has packed for his vacation in Egypt, where he'll be staying in an all-inclusive hotel. Is there anything he won't need? Is that laundry detergent? Yeah, you don't wash your clothes yourself in an all-inclusive hotel. Now he's off to his girlfriend's place to spend the weekend with her. What does he have in his bag that he really won't need there? Is it a roll of toilet paper? I think it's very likely that his girlfriend has that. Oliver is going to visit his grandparents and stay with them for a week. They live on a farm where there are cows and horses. Oliver is going to chill and do some gardening. Now check his suitcase. What's there that he won't need? I don't think he'll need his tuxedo. He'll most likely be wearing some casual clothes all the time. Yasmin is wandering through a forest and sees a spooky house. As soon as she steps inside, the door behind her back slams shut. It's the house of an old magician who doesn't like visitors. But there's a chance for strangers to escape. There are three drinks. The red one will turn Yasmin into a mouse for an hour. The green one will allow her to fly for an hour. The blue one will make her breathe fire for an hour. Which drink should Yasmin choose if she wants to get out?
Yasmin should drink the red liquid. She'll turn into a mouse and will be able to escape through this little hole in the front door. Now, Foggy is a friendly ghost living in the attic of an old house. Every night, he goes for a refreshing walk around the house for four hours. Foggy doesn't like one month of the year, because that month, he gets to walk around way less than the previous months. What's the month and why? It's February. There are just 28 days and nights in February, and 29 on the luckiest years. So, fewer nights and less time for Foggy to walk around. Just a month ago, Autumn and her family moved into a new house. Everyone loved it, but Autumn was sure that the house was haunted. She doesn't know it yet, but our old friend Foggy is the ghost that lives in her attic. He is a friendly ghost, so once he left her a message written on a mirror. Autumn woke up and saw this. Can you help her read the message? It's a code. Autumn should ignore the numbers and only look at the letters. The note says, Do not be afraid. I am Foggy. And who are you? Right before Halloween, when everyone was dressed up and carefree, all the creatures flooded a little town trying to blend in. Detective Callum was on duty to identify all the imposters and keep an eye on them. He has a couple of leads, and your task is to help him find all the monsters. Deal? The first one we need to find is a vampire. The vampire lives in one of these two houses. Can you tell which one? Look, there is garlic hanging in this house. Vampires can't stand garlic, they prefer cilantro, so it cannot be a vampire's house. So, the vampire lives in this one. Perfect, let's move on. One of these houses belongs to a centaur. Do you have any idea which one? Hmm, it must be this one. Pay closer attention to the path to the house. There are footprints of horse hooves. Centaurs have an upper body of a human, but a lower body of a horse, which explains the prints. The centaurs must be living here. The next one we need to track is a mummy. Take a closer look at these two apartments. Where does the mummy reside? Now, did you notice the bandages all over the room here? It must belong to the mummy, so I bet that's his place. Now it's time to track the Cyclops. Keep your eye out and make your best guess. Did you notice this strange object in this room? It looks like a pair of glasses, but it only has one lens. Well, that's because it belongs to a Cyclops. They only have one eye. So that must be his place. Okay, we only have one last creature to identify, a gnome. Here are two apartments. Which one does the gnome live in? Did you notice that the mirror in this apartment hangs a bit too low? That's because gnomes are short. He must be living here. Other creatures that have flooded the town are robots. For Halloween, some people started to dress up like them, too. Look at these three people. Can you find the fake robot? Look at their footprints. The robot on the left has human footprints in the beginning that only later change into tire patterns. He must be the fake robot. Let's train your eyes a bit. 
Here are Halloween emojis. All of them but one has a pair. Can you find the one that doesn't have a pair? Great job! Here it is! Okay, one more time. Now there are even more emojis. Do you see the unique one? Here it is. Good! Now let's proceed. A month before Halloween, Daphne moved into a new modern house that was built in the early 2000s. It was a great house, but Daphne got it for a very low price because it was believed to be haunted. The girl didn't believe in that, so it didn't bother her one bit. On Halloween night, she returned home after midnight. When she walked into her room, she saw a ghost floating there. The ghost looked at Daphne and said, You know what? You can't live here. It's my house. I've lived here for a hundred years, and you're making me uncomfortable. Daphne said that the ghost was lying. Why? The house was built in the early 2000s, so it's barely 20 years old. The ghost couldn't have lived there for 100 years. That's right, ghosts lie. It is Halloween night, full moon, all the creepy things, But Eslin went to an abandoned spooky house in the woods alone. As soon as she walked in, the door behind her got shut and locked. She wandered around the house and found three doors leading out, but they didn't seem safe. Behind the first door, there was a werewolf. Behind the second door, there was a zombie. Behind the third door, there was a ghost. Which way is safer for her to choose? Eslin should definitely choose the third door. Ghosts may be spooky, but they can't do her any real harm. Of course, Eslin wasn't the only one who went to the house that night. Another student, Colton, dressed in the silver armor of a knight, decided to explore the spooky house too. Just like with Eslin, the door got shut behind him right after he stepped into the house. He found three ways out too. Behind the first door, there was a vampire. Behind the second door, there was a huge dragon who hates strangers. Behind the third door, there was a huge cyclops that would crash anyone who walks in. Which way should Colton choose to stay safe? Luckily for him, he is dressed as a knight in silver armor. Vampires are afraid of silver, so the first way is totally safe for Colton. On Halloween night, Kennedy wanted to spend the evening with her boyfriend, but her dad was against her dating anyone. To go around it, she lied that she was going to trick-or-treat with her friends and promised to be home by midnight. She returned at 11.30 p.m. Yet her dad got mad at her and demanded to tell him where she really was. Wow. How did he understand that Kennedy didn't go trick-or-treating? She returned with an empty candy basket. Outside of town, hidden in the woods, there is a house where a group of friends live. A mummy, a mermaid, a ghost, a werewolf, and a witch. Every Halloween, they eat candy. There are five creatures, but this year they only have four chocolate bars, and they don't know how to split them equally. Maybe you have an idea? They should split each one of the four bars into five pieces, and then each creature gets a piece from each bar. This way, everyone will eat exactly four pieces of chocolate. Now that monsters and humans live next to each other, let's try to identify who is who. I will be showing you photos, and your task is to find a monster in each photo. Here's the first one. Can you find the monster?
Look, this guy's skin is green. He's definitely not a human. Here is the next photo for you. Be attentive. Do you see someone who is not a human here? This girl in the swimming pool is a mermaid. <laughs> Good job! Okay, here's one more. It's quite hard, but I believe in you. Who do you think is not a human here? Look, this woman doesn't cast a shadow. Now this is not normal for a human being, so she must be some other creature. Great job! Here's another one for you. Which one do you bet isn't a human? This person is carrying a wand. She must be a witch. This is probably the hardest one. You have to keep your eyes wide open. A photo of a local cafe. Do you see something suspicious? Look, there's a glass of blood in the air, as if someone's drinking it. It must be the vampire who's drinking it. But the vampire isn't in the photo because they can't be photographed. Ugh, technicalities.